In this video, we're going to be going over the basics of using Beautiful Soup. Beautiful Soup is a Python library for pulling data out of XML and HTML files. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the first thing we need to do is import a couple of dependencies. We'll be importing requests so we could download a web page. And then we'll be also importing Beautiful Soup. If you have not installed Beautiful Soup, you can do that with using pip. So you can use something like pip or pip3 and call the install. And then we need Beautiful Soup 4. And so if we go ahead and run that, um, I already have it installed. So it's just um, notifying me that the requirements have already been satisfied. And so what we'll be doing is we'll be pulling a page from Reuters. Uh, as you can see, this is their finance markets page. And what they have is a bunch of headlines and links to different articles, um, some of which have just a short synopsis of what the article is about. Then if we go to the source code, um, it's just pretty standard. Um, just a bunch of divs, list items, and a lot of other stuff. So what I'm going to do is copy the URL. And let's go ahead and set up a new variable. Um, so we're going to, that's our URL that we're going to download that page. And we'll set up another variable called response. And we'll use our request library to get the page. Let's also set another variable called HTML and then set that to response.text. Now, once we do that, we can set up our uh, beautiful soup. Uh, we'll create a new variable called soup. And so what we need to pass in is the HTML, um, which will be in a string value. And then we need to pass in a parser. We will be using the Python internal HTML parser. You can also use LXML. Um, if you had that installed, that'll, that's supposed to give you a performance when it comes, a performance boost when it comes to speed. But for the purposes of this, we will just use the built-in one. So the first thing let's we're gonna grab is the title tag. And all we need to do for that is call soup.title. And so there's a few things we could just print out here. Let's, let's just print out the tag to start off with. And if we save that and run the file. And so what we get is a full title tag. Now, if we just want the contents of this, that is very easy to get. So we just call the string property. Okay, so you can see a couple things uh, happen here. Um, we got just the text, we don't get the tag itself. And also things like the ampersand, being an HTML entity, um, we get the string value for that. With Beautiful Soup, it's also easy to get whatever the parent element is. So we'll just go ahead and grab that. So we'll just call parent, uh, which should be the head tag. So let's we'll just get the name of the tag. We don't want the full head tag. There's a lot of stuff in there. So let's just grab uh, just that and yeah, so the head tag is our parent element. Uh, if we go to the uh, view source page, our title is right here. And then the parent tag is the head tag, which basically consists of all of this. Now notice when we just call uh, soup dot tag name um, as a property, it's only gonna give us the first one. So let's grab the first anchor tag. If we save that and run it, Okay, so this is probably like somewhere in the logo. Um, it's our first tag. Now, obviously there's tons of links on this page. Um, so every single one of these headlines is a link. There's links in um, our tab separated view down here. Uh, so if we go, yeah, so in this case, um, we're near the top of the file and it looks like the logo uh, which should be right here. That's probably where that first tag is, the first uh, link tag is coming from. So if we want to find all the links, that's also easy to do. Let's just create a new variable called links. 
And so all we need to do is pass in A, so find all, and it's always going to, find all will also, will always return a list. So we can just set up a simple for loop in here. And if we just set that up and print the link. And so we get, this is gonna be a pretty long list. Um, so yeah, it has a ton of links. Um, some of them have some embedded HTML, but now obviously we're getting the full tag once again. So what we can do is we can just ask for what, whatever the attributes are inside the tag. So we'll just, uh, actually we'll just use the same line. And what that's going to do is give us a dictionary list of every single one that's got uh, so you'll notice that some of these, they, ha they have the href. Other ones, they will have a class. And notice that the class is actually in a list because technically speaking, every class, every HTML element could have many different classes. It could be more than just one. So Beautiful Soup knows um, the difference um, when that's the case. Another thing that we can do is we can just get the href. Let's say we don't care about any other attributes. We just want to know where it links to. So we'll just call get and then pass in href. And if we go ahead and rerun that, then obviously a lot of these are just going to be internal links. Um, so we have some of them are full uh, links, but mostly just the uh, links that are and so we can also search for anything that just has HTTP or HTTPS. So I'm gonna do for this, let's set up a different variable for that. And we'll call these full links. And we'll call the find all method again. And so what we can do here is we can just pass in the href as a name parameter. And so what we can do, we can use a regular expression um, as the value. And so what we're going to need is to import uh, the regular expression module. We're going to call re.compile. And let's just pass in HTTP. Let me go ahead and print this out. And we need a dot, otherwise we're going to get an error. If we go ahead and run that, um, so we are getting all of these. Um, let's do another for loop. And run this one more time. And then, so we, so the only thing we parsed out were the links that were, that had a scheme HTTP or HTTPS in them. Now, if you notice um, what we're getting, uh, so this is another important thing to um, address is that a lot of these are out of the head tag, so they're not all anchor tags. Uh, so we can go ahead and fix this because we don't, maybe we don't want the favicon or the CSS style sheets or anything like that. So we could pass in multiple items. Um, so before the uh, name parameter for the href attribute, uh, we could just pass in an anchor tag and this should only pull from anchor tags. So let's go ahead and try rerunning this. Yeah, so our, our link list is much shorter and it's because we don't have all the links that were inside of the head tag. Okay, so let's look back at our page. Uh, so it looks like we have this uh, right here. This should be the top story. Let's just do an inspect element on that. And so this whole div, um, including the photo, and basically the excerpt along with the headline um, is one. So we can go ahead and just grab a single element like that. Let's go back to our editor. And so let's say the top story is something that we want. Let's just create a new variable. And the easiest way is to use the find all method. So soup find all, and it is a div tag, and then uh, if we pass in a second string, it's going to assume that it's a class name. So the, the class name was top story camel cased, uh, as we can see right here. And so since this is going, find all will always return a list. So we need the first item, which is going to have an index of zero. And let's just go ahead and print that out. 
And if we save and run, and this is our entire um, top story. Um, so another thing, so this is very hard to read as it, as it is. Uh, so beautiful soup has a method called prettify. Actually, we need to call that as a method. So um, this should be much easier to read if we print it out this way, uh, which it is. So we see our class starts right here. Then we have that section that's got the large photo uh, followed by the heading tag and then a small excerpt of the content. I'm gonna go ahead and comment this out and then go to a new example. Now, and so in our page, we also have a section for um, different articles. Like if we go down here and do another inspect element. Um, so we have a repeating thing with an article with a class of story. And this just repeats a bunch of times. And so if we want to just pull out all these articles, um, that's very easy to do. Let's just go ahead and do that. And we'll call this stories. And we'll do soup.findall. And we're looking for a, actually not a div tag, but an article tag. And so there could be different types of articles on the page. Maybe there's something in a different section of the page that is also an article element. So we're gonna pass in a, we wanna make sure that it has, has the class of story. And let's say, let's go ahead and, and pull the titles for every single one of these stories. I'm gonna set a titles list to an empty list. Let's go ahead and loop through the stories. And so we get the title, so story.find, and um, the title is in this S, so inside of an H3 tag. So let's go ahead and grab that. So we're gonna call the find method. The find method is going to uh, return the first item, whereas find all returns a list. Um, so find will always return a single item. So we're gonna look for the H3. And let's go ahead and print that. Actually, we call this title, not h3. Okay, so we got a bunch of h3 tags. Um, there's a lot of extra stuff in here um, inside the tag. So we want, let's, let's pull out just the text only. We just want the text of each title. So we're gonna use the get text method that beautiful soup provides. Actually, let's go ahead and call it up here. And that way, all we need to print is the variable name. So what we have is a bunch of different, um, bunch of space and stuff. So um, let's call the uh, strip method. That is, so th this value that's being returned from this is just the string. So we can use the Python string method of strip. And so what we have in this white space, um, we could have a couple, there's probably a couple line breaks. There could be a line break in um, spaces and tabs and stuff. So the strip method should be able to get rid of all of that. So if we save our file and let's go ahead and run it again. And yeah, so we have our list of uh, titles. Actually, we don't need the titles list unless we were going to pull all of those and put and need them all in one spot. Okay, so that was very the very basics of using Beautiful Soup to uh, parse an HTML document. And the next set of videos, what we're going to do is we're going to do a full exercise uh, using the CIA World Factbook to pull a bunch of specific economic data for every country. Thank you for watching.